I hate the corona lockdown more and more. For today's programme, we had invited regular Yes Wine into the studio for Cook the Perfect. Her book is called Oats in the North, Wheat from the South, the History of British Baking, Savoury and Sweet. And she had promised to bring in a series of treats for Easter, gingerbread, clap cake and hot cross buns. But of course, she's not here, and neither are the no doubt delicious examples of her baking. She does, though, join us from her home in Antwerp in Belgium. Regular, why did a Belgian woman become fascinated by British baking? Well, that's a long story, but I'll try to keep it short. Uh, but when I was a child, I loved this skipping rope rhyme and it was saying, uh, white swans, black swans, who's coming to England with us? But England is closed. The key is broken. Is there a blacksmith in town who can mend this key for us? And I was absolutely besotted by the song and I started fantasizing about England. My parents watched a lot of BBC, so I saw a lot of beautiful documentaries about heritage on, uh, on television. So I always wanted to go to England while other people wanted to go, or other kids wanted to go to Disneyland. So after years of nagging, like I wanted to go to England, my parents finally gave in and we started traveling around Britain every holiday that we had. And we did it just fed my passion for Britain and uh, also for baking because I always sought out bakeries in every little village or town that we um, that we went to and, and pushed my nose against the window of those tiny bakeries to see what kind of bakes they had and how different they were everywhere. Now, I mentioned that you had intended to bring us some clap cake. I am British and had never heard of clap cake. What is it? I think clap cake is a very intriguing bake. It comes from Cumbria in the north of England. And be, that's a bit, little bit what the story of the book is. Oats in the north. Oats grow best well, oats go, are the only crop that grows very well together with barley in the north because the, the landscape, the, the climate is much more cold, more rougher, more wet, very short summers. So it makes sense that people would bake with oats because we didn't grow there. And clap cake is one of those bakes. It is what we would recognize as Scandinavian crisp bread, very thin oat cake which is baked on high temperature, and then it was dried out in front of the fireplace on purposely built racks called Haver Cake Maidens. It's an unbelievably lovely bake to eat, and people would bake them in large quantities, dry them out, and eat them with cheese or with jam, like they would eat bread, because they wouldn't have baked bread as oats just make a very dense bread. Oh, it would have been lovely to have tried it regularly. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know you've begun a hashtag on Instagram called hashtag bake corona. Why have you done that? Um, about three weeks ago, we had our first day of uh, the lockdown here in Belgium and I felt a bit strange and lost and not sure what to do with myself and I was thinking maybe I should bake something and then I felt, I don't feel really feel like baking because it was quite of a, a shocking situation we suddenly found ourselves in and then I thought that maybe other people feel like this as well. Why don't I try and get people together with a hashtag and we can all bake together while we have to social distance ourselves from each other. And uh, I, I just posted it on, on my social media accounts and I never thought it would, you know, take off. Uh, but of course, I'm a judge on the Belgian version of Bake Off. So I've got a lot of fans who are very much into baking. And after two hours, I checked my phone and there were already so many bakes tagged with the hashtag. And it started to cr have a life on its own and it went worldwide, which is fantastic to see how people are connecting through baking. And, and, and there's a little community now. Now, gingerbread was one of the things you were going to bring with you. Yes. What's the basic recipe you use for gingerbread? Well, I don't think there is a basic recipe because if you look in the cookbooks of history, um, you will see that there's always been different types of, of, of gingerbreads. And in my book, I already have five 
different recipes for gingerbread. And the one I was going to bring in today was one that had special meaning to me. It was called uh, Aunt Betty's Gingerbread in the book. And the recipe was actually given to me by someone I met on the Eurostar who came up to me and she said, I really love your first book, Pride and Pudding, and I would love to gift you my family recipe for gingerbread because of course I'm Belgian and I don't have any British family recipes. So I'm incredibly grateful if people gift me their recipe and she also allowed me to put it in my book, which is extra special. So what are the ingredients? Uh, the ingredients are plain flour, baking soda, ginger, of course, cinnamon, a bit of salt, equal quantities of butter, sugar and treacle, golden syrup, milk and eggs. And that creates a very dense, very Moorish gingerbread cake that becomes better day after day. Ooh, you're making me so hungry. <laughs> I so wish you had been here. Uh, we will, of course, put the, the recipe on the Woman's Hour website um, and uh, we'll download the Cook the Perfect podcast through BBC Sounds so people can pick this up later. The, the other thing you were going to bring, Easter, the hot cross bun. How did the hot cross bun develop? Well, the tradition of baking bread with a cross pressed into it or placed on top can be linked to paganism as well as Christianity. It's as old as baking is. Uh, it, 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 the, the cross sim symbolizes the rebirth of the world after winter, which makes sense around this time of the year. It's also a symbol of the wheel of the year. And pagan Saxons, they used to bake bread like this in honor of the goddess Oystra, which according to the Venerable Bede, back in the 18th century, 8th century, is the origin of the name Easter. So that makes a lot of sense. So do you make hot cross buns in Belgium or is, is that no, no. a really British thing to do? Hot cross buns are a very, very British thing to do. And um, it, it, it's, it's even... It's so old that the first mention of it dates back to the 17th century, where in an almanac, there's this little sentence, if I can read it to you. Good Friday comes this month, the old woman runs with one or two penny hot cross buns. And that's in the 17th century. So it is very old and very, very British. And they even try to ban it. They tried during, to ban it. They tried to ban it during uh, the reign of Elizabeth I in the 16th century. The London clerk of markets actually issued a decision prohibiting sale of any sweet spiced cakes except, except at funerals, Christmas or Good Friday, which is how the hot cross bun got linked to Good Friday. Because on other days of the year, it was prohibited to make these types of cakes. And then when Cromwell came along, he thought all these spiced cakes were way too luxurious. And he tried to ban those as well. Oh, he tried to ban everything. <laughs> <laughs> Regular, thank you so much for joining us this morning. I hope you will be baking your gingerbread and your hot cross buns and your clap cake for your Easter and uh, I just wish you could have been here but thank you Me very too. much indeed for talking to us this morning regular Easter wine